this project was, it's based in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, that's where, uh, you know, our second office is. We have an office in LA, uh, New York, and Charlotte. But that's where we do all of our studio programming for NASCAR. And so, um, so this is a couple of the key people that we were working with. Obviously, our friends at Zero Density, um, who have been fantastic, um, powered by NVIDIA, uh, Epic Games Unreal Engine. So this is, uh, this is actually a second level of the set that uh, we're just kind of getting into. But this is equipped right now. You can see just how real it is, equipped with the real-time ray tracing, which just heightens that sense of realism. So what we were trying to do is just create this um, you know, really functional set. So in the past, sets were used really for um, you know, more of a cost-saving measure. But what we wanted to do is create a big set that could be multifunctional, have a lot of different uh, locations, hyper-realism, which you guys see probably in every demonstration that involves Unreal Engine. We wanted to have template-based graphics. So we wanted to make sure that the workflow that our production team has now stayed the same. So uh, a broadcast associate can put together graphics on their uh, laptop within an iNews environment, and that runs you know, through our automa automation system the way it does now. Uh, video input for screens and monitors allows for, you know, I think you saw one of the telestration in there, um, video inputs. Uh, we also pump graphics into those monitors. And aug obviously augmented reality, which, you know, we've sort of showed a few features with the cars. Um, there was some, some, some video of tracks as well. Uh, I, I quickly mentioned it, but, you know, these were our key technology partners we were dealing with. So Zero Density has kind of really helped us kind of get into the space, uh, coach us through a lot of, you know, there's a lot that goes on into getting things lit properly, um, setting up all the levels, uh, just knowing in is an, the ins and outs and, and what we're kind of getting into. That's, it, it's a lot, it's come a lot further than, you know, as I mentioned, just a simple green screen setup. So dealing with the whole 3D space and moving locations around and how do we, how do we set up data within there? So um, these guys have been fantastic with that. Epic Games Unreal Engine, um, it's, you can see it all over the show. It's evident why people are using it. The, the realism you get, it's just, it's really impressive. And with real-time ray tracing, uh, which NVIDIA enables us to do, that stuff's only going to get better. So I, I think within the next couple years, with how pr impressive the graphics are now, it's only going to get that much better. So I talked about hyper-realism. So we do a lot of different things with NASCAR, where we're putting cars on the set, uh, tracks, uh, enables us to you know, break down, do more analysis, and also just heighten the production level. That's something that we really wanted to do with this set. Multiple shooting locations. So this, this set is used seven days a week. So there's a daily show we, we do every day called Race Hub. And then on the weekends, wrapped around our NASCAR programming, uh, we do pre and post show, uh, NASCAR Victory Lane, and a weekend edition of uh, Race Day and Race Hub sometimes. So it was really important that you know, if we're using it so much that we're flexible I mean, we want to give different looks. So these are just a couple different takes that we have, you know, where there's a, you know, a, an, an upstairs, um, you know, there's multiple shooting locations downstairs. And then on the lower left, you can see we kind of came up with this location where there's a, an enormous monitor used to break down footage uh, hooked up with a telestrator. So you can see the talent in the lower left. Uh, they get really interactive, so we can pump video in there, we can pump graphics, uh, they can telestrate, and um, it, it just really is given, it's a lot more than going into just a standard touch screen, which we used to do in the past. I mentioned templated graphics, so we currently use uh, VizRT for a lot of our, our graphic rendering. Uh, it's what we use throughout our automation systems and playlists, and it was something that we felt we really felt that we didn't quite have the knowledge within Unreal um, yet to be able to completely change every aspect of the workflow. So they needed to be able to have templated graphics. They needed to be able to be able to customize things at their desk. They needed to uh, place items in a rundown. And so what we did was we built a bridge app so that all of our scenes that we built in Content Pilot and VizRT could be used for our virtual set. And uh, what it really did was make everything invisible to the end user. The main workflow is, is the same as what they're used to. They're using, uh, they still use an automation layer through ROS. They still use VizRT for uh, templated graphics. Um, 
and then the things that are invisible to them, which we've had a huge hand with our engineers, have really excelled in all the lighting and setting up different lo shooting locations, all the things that are around to make this set work day to day. I mentioned uh, inputs, graphics, and video. So on the left, you can see that's uh, what we call our next level segment. We can pump video or graphics in there. And on the right is a, is a graphic system. So it's, it's splits between two. So we have uh, four different VizRT engines, and those get placed into um, virtual graphics within the environment. So what you see right there is a the, the source of the information is VizRT, and then that's placed into a native Unreal graphic. And we're able to split those up you know, anywhere from one to, to six different panels. And I, I would say that I think that we're somewhere around 14 different monitors, which is why it was really important that we kind of kept the workflow the same. It's, it, for the most part, it's invisible to an operator. And we felt that that was really key to success. This is a, you know, another piece of augmented reality. So in the center of the set, we're starting to use more tracks, um, you know, tell stories. So here's kind of just showing where, pe where the racers were going week to week. So we were able to hop around this uh, you know, image of the United States. So it's you know, just another way to kind of tell stories that was different and um, you know, increase that production level that we talked about. Challenges. Uh, with like any new project, there's definitely some challenges uh, for us. So you know, one was designers. They're learning new softwares. Um, they're learning how the, the zero density programs interact with Unreal Engine and how they set things up for a virtual set. Um, so really had to invest a great deal. I did mention that you know this is something that we worked on quite a quite a long time. We did we did a, a test uh, around the Men's World Cup last summer. Didn't go to air, but basically did a whole show around that. We did another test um, with a set that we had built about a year and a half ago. Um, same thing. We did a, a full run through of the test of the, of a show. It didn't go to air, but gave us an idea of where we're at. So it, it definitely was something that um, we ramped up on. Uh, wasn't something that we kind of came in, put together in a couple months. There was uh, it was quite a quite a long process. Custom template workflow. That was uh, what I had mentioned with integrating VizRT. So while it's seamless for the end user, for us, you know, we really had to create that the language that links the two together to keep that uh, intact. And managing expectations for changes. So like anything new, people are really excited about this. Our production team gives them a lot more to do, a lot more to talk about. So needless to say, uh, the list of requests comes in you know, fast and furious. And it's something that actually grows day in and day out, but it is necessary that people understand stuff takes time. Um, you know, you want to do it right. There's so many different, there's so many different uh, points of entry into the set. So if you build something within Unreal, for take for instance an AR component, you have to design it. You have to build a template. You have to uh, connect the dots. Uh, you know, for that language so that it links up. You need, to in, you need to basically build in buttons for our, our user interface, which is custom. So there's a lot of different things that uh, make this different than just integrating a normal graphic uh, like you normally would. I hesitate to use the term uh, or, or talk about this at all in past tense because it's really ongoing. It's, as I mentioned, something that our production teams have embraced. Uh, there's just so much potential. And so it is, it's really an ongoing project. We've got you know, a number of different things that we've tried to achieve um, thus far. And I would say that where we started in February to even where we're at a few months later, it's, it's light years difference. And just making sure that you know, we stay in front of these projects, stay in, you know, keep, keep pushing our guys uh, to develop. Um, and just treat it like an ongoing developmental process has really helped us. Um, capitalize on ray tracing. That's something that you know you you might have heard talked about here at the show um, with Nvidia and integrated within Unreal, and it's it's something that's new, but that's going to heighten the realism uh, to that next level. And I think within the next year and a half, two years, maybe even sooner, you're going to see you're going to see this stuff increase even more. And right now, a lot of people watch the show and 
you know, some of them would, a lot of them will actually think that it, it is a real set. You kind of lose yourself. I look at it every single day and I lose myself and I forget that they're in this green screen space. And uh, I think that's going to increase. So for me, that's really exciting. Um, really anxious to see where that ends up in a little, in, you know, about 18, 24 months. Uh, other sports and shows. Right now, we started, as I mentioned, with NASCAR programming. Um, we're lucky enough to deal with, you know, every sport from football, baseball, boxing. Um, so we have a whole gamut of, of pre and post shows that, you know, really lend itself to this type of, uh, you know, analysis and production tools. So that's something that we're looking to get into, um, whether that's a full set, um, sort of an augmentation of a set, something like this. We're still kind of trying to figure out where we go from there, but it's, it's something that's coming. And, uh, you know, the fact that we've had this, in a way, a little lab down in Charlotte is going to help us when we move forward. Uh, Reimagining information delivery. So as you, as you can see, there were quite a few different augmented reality pieces. And one of the things that we really wanted to do is, while production gave us a list of things that already existed and said, this is kind of the base of where we need to start, we didn't want to just put things back the way they used to be. So if there were 20 touchscreen segments, we didn't want to create something that was exactly like the touchscreen they had in the past. So, you know, the, you saw the next level telestration. That was something that, you know, a couple people would stand in front of a monitor and, 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 and utilize. But every single one of those features that they do within their show, we try to think of a new way to do it. Um, last week, instead of uh, a, a, a standard topic bar with percentages in front of our talent, we basically put those in AR, and it was sort of a game show look. Uh, with interactive uh, pie charts around their, their podiums. So that's something that we're constantly evaluating, making sure that as requests come in, we just you know, take a step back and look at things in a little different view and see if we can come up with a new way to, to uh, give them some tools. And build a team. I mean, this is something that more than any other project I've worked on, there's been so many different people involved from creative to software to engineering. And it's taken a lot. It's a lot of effort, but um, you know, it's exciting. It's it's something that new, it's re, it's new, and everyone's kind of really bought in and you know really excited about it. So what we're trying to do is prepare for that next level, those those next sports that are coming up, whether that's you know software uh, designers, engineers, just making sure that we have kind of the proper bandwidth in place to support things moving forward. So that's kind of a run through of how we arrived at this set that you guys have seen. Um, I'll be around for a few minutes if anyone has questions, but I uh, appreciate it. Thank you.